You're listening to Barefoot Talks and I'm Stephanie Pappas. This is part three of the talks with Kavika Foster and there's even more wisdom as he goes deeper in the the chat um, talking about the Hawaiian traditional culture and spirituality, forgiveness. So much wisdom in here so I hope there's a lot of inspiration for you. If you haven't listened to part one and part two, Please take time and listen to those episodes as well and enjoy part three with Kavika Foster. So the word conscious community, conscious people, healers, um, spiritual teachers is is used a lot. Um, I personally have experienced the um, community by, by being the founder of One Space for coming up to a decade now. How do we know what is authentic and what is not? What is your view of all these people at the uh, moment? That is a big movement. Great. Yeah. Okay. So. <coughs> Even in Indigenous cultures. Yep. There's a lot of people standing mm-hmm. up in front of people um, that they're an elder. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, when we find people sharing that they have uh, knowledge and wisdom and teachings to to share uh, and to teach others, one of the very first things that we do, whether it's in our culture, yeah, our direct heritage, or another culture or heritage, yep. what we do is we ask one very simple question. Who did you learn from? Yep. Yeah. That question right there, for us, establishes who's who. Because the, the person that says, oh, well, I was taught by so and so, who was taught by so and so, who was taught by so and so. Now there's a lineage. There's some credibility that's established based on on that on that answer. Now, when you have another practitioner that, that answers that same question as, oh well, I read it from a book, or I took it in a weekend course. Or I attended uh, a retreat. <laughs> yeah. um, then, then there is some flags that are raised for us, yeah, through the lens of our of our culture, yeah, and of our heritage. And it goes back to uh, what my teacher was sharing with me, which is that the circle of true traditional practitioners is literally this big, yeah. yeah. So within that circle. When you ask somebody, hey, where did you learn that from? Who's your teacher? And they say a name, boom, that name correlates to a direct, to a direct lineage. Yeah. <clears throat> what, we find, what we find happening a lot today within our own culture yeah. uh, and, with, and with outsiders, yeah, other people that are... Uh, that are outside of the culture, that are that are learning and practicing the culture, for example, the healing practices. When they say, oh, I learned from Auntie so-and-so, well, many a times what they don't understand is that we, because the circle's this big, we actually know who you're talking about. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's not it's not a thing about just throwing out names in order to get some sort of credibility for what it is that you're trying to share. Yeah, because it's not hard to pick up the phone and call Auntie and say, "Hey, I I have Joe here that says he learned from you," and Auntie she's gonna do two things. She's gonna say, "Oh, my kai, mm. what a good boy, mm. yeah, what a good person," mm. yeah, or she's gonna say, "Oh no, away, away no yo." So that's that. Mm. Done. Now we know. <clears throat> so it's establishing that that question. Yes. Uh, who who are you learning from? Who taught you? Uh, 
That's, it's really, really important to understand. Because what happens a lot in the spiritual community today you know, is, oh, well, I learned it at a weekend workshop. Hmm. Or I learned it in a retreat. Or I read it from a book. Hmm. Uh, and that doesn't make you an expert. Actually, what ends up happening is that kind of spiritual healer or practitioner or therapist ends up regurgitating the same stuff hmm. that all the rest of them yeah. are saying. Yeah. Huh? And never getting anybody anywhere. And it's a lot of appointments going back and forth. <laughs> it's a lot of appointments mm. and it's a lot of disappointment. But they, I mean, in this small circle, surely they can't all have the energy to hold to be working with the amount of people suffering. Okay, well, look, yeah. <coughs> when we're talking about that small circle, we're talking about, we're talking about the ones that, uh, that stuck around to learn the entirety of the knowledge and wisdom. Right. Yeah. Um, what, we, what we see a lot happening is people that, have, that, that go into a culture or, and glean off of the healing practices or the spiritual practices of that culture, uh, but they only take a piece yeah. of it because they're not willing to uh, commit entirely to learning everything that surrounds that particular set of knowledge. And so what you have happen in spiritual community today is you have people that profess to have all these wonderful wisdom teachings and spiritual teachings, but they only have a portion and they can only share that portion because that's the only thing that they were stuck around long enough to learn. Yes. The unfortunate part and where, where, where the people that come uh, seeking their guidance get disappointed is that when they have reached that point where they can no longer share outside of the parameters of what they gleaned yep. from their experience of learning, <coughs> then they start making stuff up. Yeah. Yeah. Or <clears throat> they start piecing together, piecing it together from other modalities that they are in awareness of. Yeah. Right. And then you have a you mishmash. Have, yeah. <laughs> then you have a mishmash mm. and then you have, <clears throat> you have some of them that, that step away from it entirely, just spatter it all together, yeah. call it something else. And, start peddling it as, you know, the new, the Perfect. new trendy yeah. spiritual thing to, to be on about. Mm. Um, and again, the disappointing fact about that is that the people that come to them for guidance uh, and for clarity in their lives actually get more confused. Yeah. And that, uh, that is heva. That is what we call heva. Uh, it's a defilement. Uh, and it's a defilement of the responsibility that cultural practitioners and traditional practitioners carry. Uh, because to go back to the, to the beginning portion of our interview, right? Yes. There is, it's really important that all of that is, is captured and it's not... Um, it's not twisted and we're dealing, it's going back to remembering that we're, you're dealing with real people. Hmm. Uh, and it has, it's your responsibility <laughs> and it has nothing to do yeah. with you. Uh, hmm. That's the, one of the biggest misconceptions hmm. about spiritual healing today and, and the, 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 the spiritual community as a whole actually. Uh, in this new age, uh, is that it's about them, them. Yeah. Uh, instead of it being about you, mm. which is what it should really be about. Mm. Uh, it goes back to one of the reasons why I'm not going to tell you what you don't know. Uh, that new age practitioner, that new age healer, that's what they're going to tell you. They're going to listen to you say something like, oh, I don't know how to move forward in my life. And they're going to go like this. Let me oh, tell you. yes. Let me tell you. Yeah. This is what I'm receiving. Yeah. 
this is what I'm receiving, and it had something to do with your past life. Yeah. And I, this is a true story now, okay? So I had a, a lady that came to do Ho'oponopono with me, yeah. right? For, those, for that very reason. She, couldn't, she felt like she couldn't move forward in her life. Yeah. And she wanted to, to see if the practice of Ho'oponopono could, could aid her and could assist her. Yeah. Great. Welcomed her. She came. What she ended up sharing with me is that she had gone to another practitioner. She had gone to another healer. And she shared the very same situation yep. that she was going through. And that healer took that information and said, oh yes, here we go, and began to channel for her, right? And began to channel for her and telling her exactly why it is that she wasn't able to move forward in her life. And the reason that he, that he was what he was receiving was that in a past life, she was an Indian, and she was walking the Trail of Tears, and she died shackled walking the Trail of Tears as this Indian. And that that's why in this life, she couldn't move forward. Mm. So the lady said, oh, great. Oh, fantastic. You know, what can we do? Oh, yes, that's calling to my spirit. Tell me, what can we do? Yeah. So the healer reaches down, grabs her ankle, and starts <laughs> healed, done, shackle removed. You right? can move forward now. You can move forward now. Yeah. And so the lady, she was like, oh, well, don't shackles come in two? What about my other ankle? And the, and the, <laughs> the practitioner said, that, <laughs> that healer said, oh, well, we, we can take care of that one next week. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these are the kinds of experiences that are coming to us. Yeah. These are the kinds of experiences that people bring to us as traditional healers. Yeah. yeah. These kinds of stories. And those kinds of stories are horrific, mm. actually. Mm. It's actually not laughable. It's actually... Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really concerning. Yeah, it is concerning, yeah. yeah. And, from a, and as coming from a perspective of a traditional practitioner myself, yes. it's, it is absolutely intolerable. Yeah. yeah. From a traditional perspective also, it doesn't matter to me what your past life was. Really, and I'm just going to shoot it to you like that. Yeah. Yeah. It does not matter to me if you were a priestess of the Amazon. It doesn't matter to me if you were an Indian on the Trail of Tears. It doesn't matter to me if you are a high Egyptian priest or yeah. the queen of the Nile in another past life. Uh, if in this life you're telling me that you're not feeding your family, if in this life you're coming to me and you're telling me that you aren't passionate about what it is that you're doing or the direction in which you're moving, then that past life is irrelevant. Mm. Huh? Don't come to a traditional cultural practitioner and say, oh, in another past life I was this great Amazon priestess but you abuse your children. Yeah. yeah. I want to know, actually, as a cultural, traditional practitioner and healer, I want to know why you're, why you're beating your children. Yeah. I want you to know that. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so, anyway, that was a bit of a tangent. No. <coughs> it's important. It's very important. Yeah. Because that, those sorts of stories come across, our, come across our path all the time. All the time. And never any recovery yeah. from it. The damage is, yeah. <laughs> and the, the bottom line, back to the New Age healer, mm. yeah, they don't want you to heal. Mm -hmm. ah. mm. They don't want you to heal. They want you to come back next week so that they have an opportunity to tell them uh, to channel it again. Mm. 
to tell them once more what it is that they don't know. Huh? It has nothing to do with the person seeking healing. It has everything to do with them. And their career. And that, yes, mm -hmm. and that is not healing. That's not... A spiritual ego. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I wouldn't even call it spiritual, right. for that matter. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Selfish. Mm. Huh. <clears throat> so. It must be really hard for you to be, you know, have committed and dedicated your life. Mm. Or a majority of your life, and then to come across clients to sit and have experience that it must be very frustrating. Yeah. It is, it can yeah. get frustrating yeah. at points. Yep. Most definitely. And when you say, yep, sorry. No, but what I, the, the, the good part about it, yeah. however, is that they found it. If they find themselves sitting across from me, going into in in that direction, despite having to go having to go through experiences like that, mm. well, then now we can work from it, though. Yeah, 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 because now we can forgive that. Yeah, you made it, and you got to look at the good about it. We don't look, we don't focus on the bad or the ugly. We are, we're continually looking at what's beautiful. Mm, I like that. Even if the experiences that we have and the experiences that are being shared to us are far from it. But there's a, yes, there are a lot, they're charlatans. Mm. New age healers. It's a big time for it. And they don't want to heal. Mm. That's not... It. That's one of the biggest misconceptions. It's one of the biggest illusions that they create. Talking about an illusion. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's, that is the illusion. Mm. Yeah. But we can pinpoint it from a mile away. Yeah. And the audacity. How dare you? Mm. It's playing with the spirit, isn't it? It's, yes. Mm. It's playing with spirit. Mm. It's playing with somebody's life. Yeah. Yeah, and their purpose and their path. And yeah. Mm. So. Do you believe we all have a purpose? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we do. But a lot of us are blocked by these stones to, to navigate where that purpose is. Yep. And that purpose... Uh, God. Oh, right. Oh, man. Oh, this is fun stuff. <laughs> that purpose is whatever that individual wants it to be. Okay. Yeah. Here's the thing about spirituality that a lot of people don't talk about. Is that it's not for everybody. That's, the, that's another really big difference. Really big. Really big. Big. Mm. It's not for everybody. Yeah. You want to know the you want to know the segment that says that it is. Tell me. Religion. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Religion is the one that says it's for everybody, and this is what it is. Yeah. And this is how it is. Yeah. And you're an evil person if, if you don't. If you don't, and you will go to hell, not yeah. heaven. Yeah. Where spirituality Cultural, is not traditional, for ancestral, heritage. Listen to it very closely. It's not for everybody. Okay. <clears throat> That's powerful. Yeah. Because so. it's and because it's powerful. That's why it's not for everybody. Mm. We have seen, we were talking about it earlier, but in all of the political climate today, yeah. that's what happens when knowledge and wisdom fight one another. Wow. That's what happens 
when the wisdom of our ancestors is utilized inappropriately. Nuclear power, atomic power, that's not new. <laughs> that's ancient. Okay. That's old school. And that's a perfect example of ancient knowledge utilized without wisdom. wisdom. That's the epitome of individuals coming in, taking something, gleaning only what it is that they want, turning it around, and utilizing it without the entirety of the wisdom. Hmm. And brings us in the mess. Knowledge Wherein? utilized without wisdom. wisdom. Knowledge utilized without wisdom. Mm -hmm. And we gain our wisdom from who? Our ancestors. Those who have gone on before us. Ah, this is really important mm. now. This is super important now. When I'm talking about our ancestors, I'm not talking about all dead people. Yeah. Ancestors in our cultural understanding are those beings that were here that led their lives in alignment loving unconditionally observing protocols cultural protocols being respectful being happy all the time oh yes all the time yeah. died when they wanted to, yeah. they chose when it was to their time to go. Mm. Packed their bags, readied their house, and left. This earth. Left this earth, left this realm, went to the other realm. Yeah. Is Those are deep. Massive. <laughs> massive. Yeah. I'm not talking about all dead people. Yeah. Ancestors are those that, that live their lives right. Pono. Ho'o. Pono. Pono. Mm. Lived their lives right. They're the ones that made sure their stones were not here. You know what the stones really do? Not, they don't just plug up your connection. They weigh your spirit down here yeah. and keep it here in this realm. Because you become mischievous. Yes. Yeah. This is an important point. This is a very important point. We're always talking, and you hear the spiritual community always talking about the rosy, pink, beautiful, fluffy stuff. Uh-uh. No. We're talking about the realities of spirituality here. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And it's real. Those stones, yeah, your stone of anger can lead you to do things that you cannot come back from. They can twist and corrupt your spirit. Your anger can twist and corrupt your spirit if you do not find a way to remove, remove it. it. Yeah. And if you don't remove it, then it will fester and it will, and it can, and 99.9% .9 of the time will lead you to do things that you cannot come back from, like murder somebody. Yeah. Or to sickness. Or to sickness. Mm. Yep. Mm. But when that happens, <coughs> When that happens, your spirit doesn't, at the time of death, your spirit doesn't leave this realm. It stays here to yeah, continue doing the so mischievous important. things. That's why the equation from earlier is perfect sense. Yeah. We were doing it in the past. We're doing it right now. We're going to continue to do it in the future. On Earth. On Earth. Yeah. Yep. Not necessarily in another dimension. Oh, no. Yeah. Now the dimension is... <laughs> yeah. Dimensions are like past lives. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Dimensions are like past lives. Neither here nor there. Yeah. What you do right now determines what you're going to do next. So it's really important that... But you're saying it's not for everyone. But the people, the souls that are ready... Is that the, the souls that are ready to really work on removing their stones so that they don't have to stay. Mm -hmm. 
Yet we're all afraid of death. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And look, here's the other thing. Yeah. Here's, here's the other thing about spirituality not being for everybody. Yeah. yeah. It's perfectly okay right where you are. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. On any level. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on any level. And on yeah. any realm. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the importance, the, the fact, the reality is that whatever level that you reach here in this realm is the level that you're going to be on when you, when you leave this yes. realm yeah. and move into the next. Because a lot of people get into a spiritual practice and want to change their partner or change their family. And that's a very important Mm -hmm. point that you make that it's not for everyone no and everyone is at different levels yep yeah and more and to your point yeah yeah who are you yeah <laughs> who are you yeah. to tell somebody else in your family or anybody anywhere yeah where they should go and what they should do yeah oh and by the way it's not your responsibility to do so mm-hmm mm -hmm. <laughs> I love yeah. it. More importantly, love them for who and who what they, they are, are. Yeah. in their entirety. Because then you are doing, you are in alignment. Because then you are in alignment. Yes. Mm. And then your connection is free and clear. That is <laughs> the power. That <laughs> is the power. <laughs> it's so, it's it's so it's simple. It's so simple. It's so simple. It's so, <laughs> simple. It's so, yeah. it's so and, okay, staying mm. in alignment. Mm. Is there a practice that can help us stay in alignment in a physical way? Like what yes. you eat, what you exercise, how you do you, you know, you in your daily life, do you okay. put on the television? All right, do you well, have a morning practice? Do you watch the sunrise? Good. Let's now go you're there. talking about a discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're talking a complete lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. You're talking about a way of life. Yes. And the way of life of our ancestors was also very simple. Wake up when the sun rises. Mm. Go to sleep when the sun sets. Mm. Don't work in the middle part of the day because it's the hottest. And you'll get exhausted and you may faint. Huh. These, are, these are integral, integral layers of understanding of spirit. Pray to everything. I was going to say, to who? <laughs> oh, to everything. <laughs> yeah. Right? Pray to the wind. Pray to the trees. Pray while you're sweeping the floor. Pray while you're changing your child's nappy. When you say pray, you mean in gratitude or in <clears throat> talking? I mean, I mean communicate. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, communicate to spirit on any level. Yeah. Uh, to remind you of the connection that you have. Yeah. To everyone and everything around you. So I ex uh, I'm giving thanks. Yep. You feel beautiful and... Yeah. Prayer, is, prayer is communicating your needs. Okay. It's also communicating your wants. Look, in the, in the earlier part of my learning, I thought prayer was only to be utilized in extreme circumstances. Yes. Yeah. I really thought it was like when you were in dire need, you were down <laughs> and out, and you needed help. I need so the owl. Please, <laughs> now. Yeah. You know? Mm -mm. No. No. Our ancestors were praying all the time. That prayer was their constant reminder of the path that they were walking. Mm and the direction in which they were going. Gratitude is important. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, gotta give thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the root of gratitude. Yeah. From a traditional perspective. Yeah. It's not yours. None of it. Even the things that you think are, they're not. So you better damn well be thankful. Be thankful mm. for all of it. 
Yeah. Including the stuff that you don't really enjoy. Lessons. <laughs> is um okay. I often practice mind. Uh, I not often. I, I like to practice mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Um, and to I used to call it meditation, but I now just find time, as you're saying, to connect in nature and just be still and come back to the breath. Often I say that I'm tapping like a plug into the source so that I can be able to hear and be guided and know mm -hmm. which step to take. Mm -hmm. Is that from your teachings how you would, would advise, you know, teach in your culture or would you call it, like a lot of people call it God mm -hmm. or they name a guru, Krishna. Mm. How would you um, share your wisdom on, on that? Okay. Yeah. Our ancestors, here's how we're going to share it, and we share yes. it the way that they would share it. Yes. Our ancestors didn't have time to meditate. Yeah. Yeah. Our ancestors did not have the time to sit. I don't have time to meditate. <laughs> <laughs> I have four children. It, well, then you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> I get up at sunrise there's, and I... There's work that needs to be and done. my son's right there, and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> but this... this and what I'm, what I'm really shaping and forming here yeah, yeah. is the understanding of what meditation looks like today. Yeah. Meditation today looks like sitting cross-legged and just totally zenning out. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Fantastic. You need a break. You need a breather. You need some time. Fantastic. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. From, a, from an older perspective, however, yeah. there was lots of work to be done. And you only had this amount of daylight to do it. Yeah. So you didn't have time to be sitting around doing nothing. You know, I don't know where our ancestors found their time to meditate? In a taro patch. Mm. Like for me, it's How cooking. much yeah. mental capacity do you need to walk through a taro patch, pick out a weed, and throw it on the bank? <laughs> Absolutely none. <laughs> this much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? So, and while you're out there, taking care of your ohana, of your family, and you enter into that space because of that mundane task of removing weeds from a water patch, you're communicating to your ancestors. Hmm. You're listening to them. In its core, that's the difference. Meditation, in comparison to prayer. Yeah. Meditation, you're listening. What are we listening to? You're listening <laughs> and you're watching to your ancestors. Yeah. yeah. They're talking to you. In prayer, you're talking to them. Oh, that's big. That's massive. That is massive. Thank <laughs> yes. you. I needed to hear that. <laughs> In prayer, you're communicating to them. Mm. Hmm. So no, this, this, newer, this newer understanding of what meditation looks like today, oh no. Our ancestors wouldn't have it. <laughs> Kalamai, excuse me, oh no. Is there an inner voice that we're listening to as well as our ancestors? Ah, <laughs> and here's, here's some really juicy. <laughs> yeah, here's, go. <laughs> here's something really, really juicy. Yeah. In an ancient perspective, in a traditional perspective, there is no separation. Hmm. Between our ancestors and our inner self. That's right. Right. Okay. So Got even it. Even if we go within and hear a voice, it's, it's the them. lineage of our ancestors. It's them. Mm. And when we say our ancestors, not necessarily our grandmother. Right. It, it's what we're saying, the people that lived in alignment. Right. Yep. Which may include your grandmother. Right. Yep. But we all have, we all have individuals in our family that may not have made it <laughs> to the realm of the ancestors. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> okay. I know a couple in my life. I know a couple in my, yeah. my particular branch of the family Me that too. Uh, didn't make it. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't mean I love them any differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. That's how they it chose to live their, their life. path, yeah. Oh, 
But th- going back, right? Yeah. Going back to what you were just saying, there shouldn't be a difference between the inner voice and between the, the inner voice and your ancestral voice. Right. Uh, another way that this that this concept comes comes across our path is how do I know whether it's my mind or my intuition telling me what it is that I need to do? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're in alignment, it doesn't make a difference. Because mm, your mind, body, and soul Whoop. is in alignment, and it's one. Mm. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the guidance. It doesn't matter if the guidance from your ancestors, from your guardians, from the higher power comes in through your mind, through your intellect, or it comes in through your gut or through your intuition. Because <laughs> you're in alignment. It's not up or down. But rather than looking outside to your guru and saying, "What do I need to do?" You're very much teaching us to be in alignment. Ah, yeah. Now here we go. Yeah. Here's another one. <laughs> Look, look, look. <laughs> 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 Ooh, this is fun. Okay, look. Hmm. Well, there's a lot of chanting mm-hmm. in today's society. Yep. And we're calling on the gurus or the goddesses and gods. There you go. Yep. It's and about, look, it's about paying respect. Okay. And it's about looking and and honoring them okay and what they've given you yeah so in that same in that same thinking yeah you need to you need to pay respect what happens here, especially in the new age spiritual mm. world, mm. yeah, is that it becomes it becomes very selfish. Yeah. Now yeah. now it becomes I don't have to look towards them. I don't have to ask them. Yeah. Because I have it all within me. Right. Yeah. All I have to do is look within. That's what's happening out there in the new world of spirituality today. They've taken that teaching that came from somewhere and now they don't have to look anywhere else. So we need to so still respect the gurus. Yes. The goddess, gods and goddesses. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean I They're our ancestors. Yeah. Mm. They are our ancestors. And it doesn't matter levels. what lineage because, you know, Lakshmi, Krishna. No. Or Aphrodite. Nope. <laughs> my, our, my, my direct lineage, when another god came to their shores, they said, Aloha. Mm. Unconditional love. Kia kua. E mahalo kia kua. We love your god. We thank your god. When the missionaries arrived on our shores in the 1820s and 30s, and they brought with them their Christian god, that's what they said to them. Mahalo kia kua. Aloha kia We love your God. We thank your God. Mm. <clears throat> when mm. Shiva came along, mahalo. Aloha. When Buddha came along, mahalo. Aloha. Because these are all our ancestors. These are all. And, yeah, we, our ancestors utilized na'akua for a purpose. Na'akua was plural. It's many, the many. Yeah. Because I'm not going to differentiate between your gods and mine. Just like I'm not going to differentiate between you and I. The moment we begin to do that, you there's a possibility for conflict. Yeah. Because we're looking at the separation rather than how we're unified. Hmm. It becomes my God against your God. And our ancestors stayed away from that as much as possible. <clears throat> you, want, you want to know what happened when, when those sorts of behaviors and actions really started happening? They closed their mouth. Your culture. They nodded. Yep. They nodded in. Yeah. Because our ancestors were also the kind of people that they're not going to tell you that you don't know. In the same manner that we're going to tell you 
uh, that we're not going to tell you what you don't know? Huh? We're not going to tell you what you don't know. Hmm. Goes both ways. Hmm. Yeah? Because I'm not going to offend you. I'm not going to be rude to you. Because that would be out of alignment. Because that would be out of alignment. Mm. And that's not unconditional love. That's not aloha. Mm. Big ones. Big. Mm. I could talk to you all evening. I could go on and on and on too. Let's do it. I think we need to have a part two of this interview at another date because I think more's going to come through me to ask. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's, you know, um, I really, from meeting you a year ago mm. to meeting you today, mm. I'm not telling you your path, but I feel... It's an honour to watch you step into your power. Oh. And I can feel your power. Mm. And I, I look forward to walk alongside your journey or fly alongside your journey and to see you spread this wisdom. And I will support you in every way. Wow. <laughs> but know this, Stephanie. Yes. All of those kind things that you share with me, yeah. they don't belong to me. They belong to my ancestors. Mm. I felt like your ancestors were talking through this interview. That's where all of that needs to go. Yeah. Mm. I wouldn't be able to sit here with you in this beautiful space doing this incredible interview mm. if it were not for them. Yeah. I feel immense gratitude for my ancestors and our ancestors together as one. Mm. Because I believe we both share the similarity that we surrender to the path we're on. I still don't know where my path is leading <laughs> and I believe you're the same. So we are brave to turn up and surrender mm. to the path that we're on. And on that note, thank you. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mm-hmm.